I want to talk about a player that is not getting a lot of attention, but it's going to have a major role on this team this season. So before we unpack all of this, one last call here as the month of June wraps up. We are competing with all the other NFL channels here at Chat Sports to see who can gain the most subscribers. And our channel is unfortunately towards the bottom of the list at number 9 out of 22 in total. So I am proud of everyone that has joined, but let's not be satisfied with ninth place. If you are not subscribed to the Broncos Breakdown, go ahead and do so right now. Get yourself the best free Broncos YouTube content out there. Let's talk about this mystery man that Broncos country needs to know a little bit more about, and that is linebacker Cody Barton. One of the smaller free agent signings back in March and into April, but Cody Barton is in for what I think is a pretty large role on this defense, and just based on the chatter following OTAs and minicamp, no one seems to talk a lot about Barton or even know a whole lot about Cody Barton. So I want to spend the next 10 minutes of your time, if you'll let me, getting you guys familiar with the Josie Jewell replacement, who has had a big role on this defense the last two years, and now it's going to be turned over to Cody Barton, who signed a cheap one-year, $2.5 million contract. He was a third-round pick out of Utah by the Seahawks back in 2019, spent four years in Seattle, then he spent last year with the Washington Commanders, starting on their defense for about two-thirds of the season. Now, like I mentioned, Josie Jewell, who left in free agency for the Carolina Panthers on a three-year, $22-plus million contract, is leaving big shoes to fill because he was an instrumental part of this defense over the last two seasons. And I think Cody Barton is going to take over at the starting inside linebacker job next to Alex Singleton. There will be some competition between Barton and Jonas Griffith and maybe even a little bit of Justin Stranad although I think he is more of a special teamer than a true defensive starter. But Cody Barton and Jonas Griffith will definitely be competing for that starting linebacker job. And so what I want to do on today's show is get you guys familiar with Cody Barton and how large of a role he's going to have this season if he does end up being the starter, which, spoiler, I think he will be. Because last year, Alex Singleton was one of the leading snap getters on this defense, playing nearly 96% of defensive snaps. Josie Jewell was the next highest linebacker at 796 snaps. He played 16 games, by the way, so he was on the field a whole bunch. That's not a part of just being an injury-riddled player, although he has had his fair share of injuries during his NFL career, probably more than his fair share of injuries. Uh, but last year, Jewell played 70%. So if we want to get money ball here, like this is our Johnny Damon, right? And we got to replace 70% of defensive snaps. That is top 10 on the Broncos' defense. 796 snaps is a lot of football. So while everyone is looking at Bo Nix, and I am too, and rightfully so, there's a guy who's going to get 796 snaps that we should probably get to know a little bit better. So that's what I really want to do on today's video. Now, Barden spent the first four years of his career in Seattle with the Seahawks. He struggled out of the gate. He was a big special teamer for Seattle. Then he started to become a starter towards the end of his time of his four-year contract, starting a lot of games for the Seahawks in 2022. That led to him being signed by the Washington Commanders, where he started in all 13 games that he appeared in last year for the Commies, recording 121 tackles, three tackles for loss, no sacks, and one pass breakup. Now, Sean Payton has been publicly speaking out about Cody Barton's abilities as an A special teamer, but I think Barton is more than just a special team signing. For starters, the last special team linebacker signing turned out to be a pretty good one. Alex Singleton. That was his role with the Eagles before he came over to Denver. And then he became their number one linebacker. So hopefully Barton is on the same path. But just because Cody Barton played a lot of special teams with the Seahawks, I'm not going to pigeonhole him into that's a special teamer right there. Maybe he starts on defense. No, I think you guys are looking at it backwards. The guy didn't play a single special team snap last year with the Washington Commanders. I think he, this is a defensive signing, and special teams will follow afterwards. Now, more background on Barton. His pro football focus grades the last two years in which he was a starter in the NFL. Not one of the best in the eyes of PFF last year, ranking 74th out of 82. But he didn't really have one area where he really regressed or maybe he like stood out in a bad way sure the run defense in 2023 not superb but you can see just a season before that in 2022 
it was up nearly 20 points. So I'm not going to lie and pretend that I watched a whole bunch of Cody Barton film last year to diagnose why his run defense grade went down. I'll just attribute it to the commanders were kind of a dumpster fire and hopefully a change of scenery can turn things around for Mr. Barton. But the only thing I need from Cody Barton, and Cody, I'm sure you're watching right now, is just don't be a liability, right? Just cannot have another Damari Mathis. Sorry to pick on Damari, where it's just so blaringly obvious that is just not working, right? We just got to get him off the field right now. So as long as Barton is just not someone that needs to be pulled off the field after three or four weeks and put on a different veteran player, I think the Broncos linebacker core in this defense can tread water because it's not a defense that is filled with playmakers. They lose Justin Simmons. They've got Pat Sertan. They've got some good pieces up front, but let's not kid ourselves. This defense is not top five or anything. So I'm sorry to rain on anyone's parade that thought the Broncos defense was going to be one of the leading defensive units in the NFL this year. It's probably not going to be, but I just can't have it be bottom 10, right? I just need, as this team kind of enters uh, some of a soft retool, rebuild, whatever cliche you want to use, just be middle of the pack, right? Middle of the pack would be great for Cody Barton this year. And anything more than that, it's gravy. Because like I said, Denver is definitely in some level of a rebuild or reform, retool. I mean, look at the changes they made. They went from a $15 million safety in Justin Simmons to a $6.6 .6 million safety in Brandon Jones. They swapped out Jerry Judy's near $17 million cap hit for Josh Reynolds at $4.5 million. Josie Jewell making $7.5 million this season in Carolina. They get Cody Barton for $2.5 million. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what a retool looks like. And you can keep your head in the sand and refuse to accept that. But when you start cutting costs and going at cheaper options, you don't do that because you feel like you are entering your best championship window. You do that because you feel like we need to reset a little bit and let's not burn the books and get ourselves into some cap trouble when we're not really even in a great spot to start winning playoff games. So with playoffs in mind, will Denver just make the playoffs this year? Like, I think winning playoff games is the next step here. But I think just making the postseason, getting in the dance, and getting the fan base, you know, rejuvenated and back in it, that would be huge for the locker room, for this coaching staff. So let me know if you think Denver will make the playoffs. I'm going to give you my answer at the end of today's video. Now, the other guy that is in the midst of competing for that starting inside linebacker job to replace Josie Jewell is Jonas Griffith. I don't know if anyone has won over a fan base's heart more than Jonas Griffith did when he came over from the Rams off of their practice squad, uh, the 49ers, whatever it was. He unfortunately missed all of last year with a torn ACL, suffered very early in training camp. That was a big-time bummer. But the two seasons prior to that where he was in Denver – and some thought just as a special teamer, he started 12 games in two years between 22 appearances, and he played some really good football for stretches there. It wasn't always consistent from the start of the season to the end, but in 2021 and in 2022, he both years had like a four to five game stretch where he looked like the next Brandon Marshall, the linebacker, not the receiver. Like he looked like a legitimate starting linebacker on this team. And so now we'll turn it over to Barton and Griffith to see who can win that starting job to replace Jewel. In his career, 92 tackles, four tackles for loss, one interception, and one pass breakup to go along with it. Ultimately, my gut tells me I think Cody Barton is starting. I'm not quite sold on a $2.5 million contract being just for special teams when he didn't play special teams last year. Like, I can rally around a $2.5 million contract going to a core special teamer especially with the new kickoff rule. But don't you think you would spend $2.5 million on someone who at least played one snap of special teams last year? So no, I'm not going to buy the line of that's just for special teams. Now, if that was the case, they would have gone probably a different direction. I think the signing was more in part because of what he can do defensively. And so for that reason, I think Cody Barton will be the starting linebacker next to Alex Singleton. Quick trivia intermission here. Which linebacker is second in tackles for the Broncos since 2010, only trailing Von Miller? I'll reveal the answer later on in today's episode, but pause right now, think about it. Which linebacker, keyword linebacker, is second in tackles trailing the future Hall of Famer Von Miller from 2010 
the press. Another day of summer hot takes where it is a high of 94 degrees in Denver. So right at the cutoff line for fajitas plate hot take versus it's a dry heat. So my fajitas plate hot take today, the Broncos will end the year 9-8, and eight, go into the offseason riding a three-game winning streak, but unfortunately they will miss the playoffs. So unfortunately not the ideal ending for the Broncos, but – Surely one that I think everyone can be optimistic about where the offseason is headed. Our trivia answer, Todd Davis. That's right, the Broncos linebacker that played from 2014 to 2019. I was a little surprised to see him ahead of Brandon Marshall, but Todd Davis, the answer to, th to today's trivia question. Hopefully you guys enjoy the trivia. I feel like it's a fun way to kind of break up the slowness of the NFL offseason. But that will do it for us on today's show. Thank you guys so much for playing along, and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you.